Grisaille is a mural painting technique where you only paint in grey. So there are a few examples behind me which we'll look at in more detail as the, the workshops go on. This week we're going to make a design for a large scale Grisaille project. So I think that as Grisaille is traditionally a wall painting technique, it will be nice to make a large scale design, but we're only going to draw a section of it. So today is about making the design. Um, so over here, I've got a design that I've made and it's a pop-up design. The Rizai element is this, I've done trees in the background. So that's my design. Um, in the foreground, I've painted a little leopard, I don't know if you can see the leopard there in watercolour, um, and also some potted plants. And I've just put those in to give scale to my design. So you know when you see an architect's model, sometimes they'll have a little figure in the model. And that will show you how big the building is. So if you, when you make your design, you might want to put a figure in. And obviously if the figure is very small, we'll know that this wall is very tall. Whereas if your figure is larger, it will indicate that it's a lower ceiling and uh, your window or door is, um, is smaller. Um, I've painted these little features in watercolour. You might want to just cut things out of a magazine. Uh, your design can be anything you want it to be. I've done something which is quite extensive and covers the whole wall. You might want to just do a couple of little mice down here by the skirting board. Um, I've got a couple of other ideas. You could also, if you want, you can make a second one and you can have connecting rooms or this could be a garden. You could do your grisaille design on the outside wall and then you could make a little door and you could go through into the inside. Um, so you can fit different ones together. Other suggestions might be, sorry, I'm just getting, I had these photographs to hand, so I'm just going to pop them in here as other thoughts. I paint a lot of clouds. So that's the idea of, you know, covering the whole wall with clouds. Um, that's a picture I took in the National Gallery of rather a complicated frame um, and painting. But you could uh, do quite a simple frame, you could do a self-portrait, anything that you want. Um, another suggestion was to do a creature. In this case I photographed a pelican in the park. Um, the scale at which I reproduced it here, it looks like rather a large pelican. Uh, and another option would be to choose something which, so here I'm suggesting, you know, flowers over the whole wall. But the reason I chose this photograph is that you've got a blurry background and then these flowers are meant to be in focus. They look rather blurry on my screen. In fact, the whole thing, it was pretty blurry. Um, but the idea was to think about drawing something where you've got sharp focus in the foreground and it's softer in the background. The main thing is that you draw something that you really enjoy drawing. And the only um, thing that I would say is that we're doing our large scale design. Then we're going to draw, pick, you'll pick an area to draw. And the only thing that I would say that is really important is that the area that you're drawing needs to be at eye level or below because what we don't want is to make a very tall, large scale design by joining lots of pieces of paper together. And if you end up trying to stand on a stool to fix it to the wall or furniture or a ladder, that's incredibly dangerous. So we don't want to do that. So your design can be as extensive as you want, but the area that you're going to draw, pick something that you'd like to draw, that you'll enjoy drawing over a few weeks, um, that is a sort of, you know, somewhere that you can attach it to the wall and look at it on the wall um, without uh, having to stand on anything in order to do that. So we'll get started. Oh, just, I've done a window, you could do a door, but remember also there might be pictures 
from a magazine, you could have a view through, you can always stick. That's uh, in Kew Gardens, a photograph from across the street. I don't know, it might be a view of somewhere that you've been or somewhere you'd like to go. You, you could draw this element or use a photograph. And on the front cover, I've put uh, a little cover here with a title and I've just called it Another Room. And I put the date, May 2020, because when I do design um, for people, it's very important that we know what room we're talking about. So I would say, um, you know, third floor uh, sitting room or whatever. And then the date's important because I can then, we can look back at the designs. It might go backwards and forwards uh, and there'd be changes. And so having a date helps. Uh, to identify which design we're talking about. So you might want to give your room a name um, and, and put the date there as well. First, we're going to make our, our pop-up room. So you should have three pieces of A4 paper and a pencil. And we're using copy paper. You can use uh, thicker paper if you want. The design I just showed you, I had some slightly thicker paper and I use the slightly thicker paper for my final piece. This is going to be a sort of sketch model, just to make sure that everything fits and something that you can sketch on while you're developing your design during the week. So you've got your paper landscape and then you just fold it over and flatten it down. So we folded the first one in half. And then though these are your walls, so you've now already made your walls, so we'll just put that to one side. And then get your second piece and fold your second piece in half. Always in the same, you know, landscape. This piece of paper is going to be our ruler. So we need to hang on to that, we'll keep that to hand. So that's our second piece. And finally, our third piece, same thing. We're folding that in half. And now step four, we're unfolding this third piece of paper. So you've got it on your desk there. I'm just going to swap mine for one with some notes on. So that is your third piece of paper. You've unfolded it. And now, if you take your piece of paper that it, we're going to use as your ruler and put it down in the bottom left hand corner, does that make sense? So the fold is there and you put your piece of paper here, line it up reasonably well if you can. And then with your pencil, you draw around it. So then we've drawn this box here. And then you see this center fold here. We want to just continue the line up to the top of the paper. So we'll use our, our ruler piece of paper again and draw up to the top. And then we need to continue this line as well. So that's the line there from where we put our, our piece of paper. So again we'll use this one as a ruler just to continue that line up. So I'll put that one to one side now. And now we need to remove this section and this piece. So I've got a Another, so this is the step five here. We need to lose this section. And if you have scissors to hand, you could cut that piece out. So I would perhaps fold over this piece first. And we can, oh, I'm not making a very good job of this. I haven't folded it very well, but it doesn't matter too much. So I've removed that piece. And I've actually got one here, 
can see I've then cut out this piece here and I've ended up with one of those. So that's going to be our floor. Using this quite sort of flexible paper, the copy paper, that we might have a little bit more of that around. Um, it's, it's quite good for making, a, this is going to be a sort of temporary model, a sketch model. And one thing that I find is if I use my most precious materials to begin with, I then get a little bit fussy about what I'm doing. I'm not so relaxed and my designs tend to look a little bit stiff and uh, over formal, fussy, worried really. I find working with these sorts of materials helps me relax a little bit into the design process. So if we've, if we've got to that, then we need to get our ruler piece of paper once more. And we're going to draw a line across here. So we're going to draw a line from corner to corner here. So from where you've cut out there, down to the front here. This is so that we can make our pop-up design fold nicely. If, if we don't have a fold here, uh, what will happen when we try to bend it is it will just crumple up. So we're making that line just to mark where we're going to make the fold. And then finally, we're going to fold it upwards. Does that make sense? Looking down on it, is that? Okay, so we're folding it upwards. So these are our, that's going to join, our, join the walls. So these pieces here, are folded up like that and we want the fold to come up towards us so that when we close our little book the floor is going to fold up inside the book um, if we fold it the other way it's going to stick out of the bottom of the book so we want it to or pop-up card I suppose it's not really it's a pop-up card rather than a book so we we should have now a floor. So this is mine that I've already started to sketch on. And if we go back to that very first piece of folded paper that we did, those are going to be your walls. So now we need to fix them together. And I'm, I've got a couple of paper clips. So my plan was to fit, put a paper clip just at each end. If you don't have a paper clip or two paper clips, um, you could put a bit of tape on there, on the back there to hold it together. Um, if you're using cellar tape, uh, try to detack it a bit. So if I put my arm there, if I'm using sellotape, I just press it down a few times on my jacket so it picks up some of the fluff on the jacket because what we want is for this design to be dismantleable. And if we taped it or glued it really well now, we wouldn't be able to dismantle it. Because what I'm suggesting is that you might make a few of these now and then you can do your sketching. You can design the pattern you want to have on your floor. You can work out where you're going to put your windows. I've started to sketch a few flowers on mine. Hmm, they may come into focus if I can stay really still. Huh. Anyway, um, so, so the idea is that you can undo it, uh, have your wall flat, sketch away, um, try out some, you know, maybe you don't have to add windows and doors, but you may want to, and then fit them back together again. Just play around while you're deciding uh, what your final design is going to be. If you're cutting windows and doors, sorry, I'm just going to remove this bit of tape from the back to show you. Um, if you are cutting windows and doors, 
you might find that if you are only using copy paper, it's a bit floppy. Um, and also if you get to a point where you've decided what your final design is going to be, if you only have copy paper, uh, I think I showed you this is slightly stiffer paper that I used for mine. Um, but if you only have copy paper, that's absolutely fine. But you can add a bit of card to the back to reinforce the walls. So again, you could attach that with paper clips, four paper clips to make a temporary fix. So you could uh, reinforce it like that. It might make it easier for cutting out uh, windows and doors because once you've cut those out, if you've got very thin paper, it might become a little bit floppy. Um, but when you're attaching your, your card, you just need to be sure that you're leaving a little gap uh, between the pieces of card at the top so that it can still fold. Um, so I hope now that everybody has a has a pop-up room. Um, I'm just going to go through very briefly some of the drawing techniques we're going to be learning over the next few weeks. So what I'm hoping is that next week you might come back with a room or rooms, an idea of something that you would like to draw. Um, this sort of drawing is ideal really for realistic drawing, um, but if you want to do something that's completely abstract, that's just a range of textures, that's absolutely fine. The only thing to think about is that it's probably helpful to have some visual reference of what you're drawing. So I'll just show you in a moment, I've got some quite good photographs of the flowers that I wanted to draw. Um, and also that the area you're going to concentrate on is at eye level or, or somewhere that you can reach on the wall so that you're not standing on the furniture. Because I think even though this is a, a drawing class, it will be nice to learn a little bit about mural painting, what a drawing looks like from a distance, different techniques that we can use to make things work from far away and close to and so on. I got a photograph of a flower and I put it behind a sheet of copy paper, put it up at the window and I've drawn an outline. Can you see the outline here? So I drew the same flower four or five times on separate pieces of paper so that um, I, can tr I could try out different techniques. Uh, the sort of drawing that we'll be doing, there'll be quite a lot of shading. I've got this one, which is in charcoal. Um, and that's just to show you, a, I think it's a bit easier to see than the pencil. But do you see the there's quite sort of soft, smudgy, blended techniques. So we'll be, those are the sort of techniques we'll be looking at. Um, and the materials that we're going to use are, so if you can see if you could gather these together, we're going to use some torn paper. So they're all things that you've got to hand. So um, one of the techniques we'll be doing is using torn paper to mask off an area and make an edge. So if I just show you here to make a nice crisp edge, say to a petal or a creature or an eye or, you know, whatever it is that you want to draw. So we'll be experimenting with that and then we'll be doing blending, just rubbing with a finger or we'll be rolling up some bits of copy paper into little uh, tubes like this that are kind of pointy at the end. There's a an actual um, tool that you can buy in the shop called a tortillion, but we can just make them out of rolled up paper. And they're very good for doing uh, smudging and blending. Um, so when you use the torn paper to make an edge, I don't know whether you can see there, but it, it gives quite a sort of crisp finish. So in this area where I've drawn this petal, I've torn the paper to mask 
off the um, the petal and uh, I've made a torn paper edge which is my petal rather than drawing the wiggly line I've used the torn paper to make them with the wiggly line that is the edge of my petal there. Um, the other thing that would be useful if you have it is a, a paper clip um, and we'll just unfold the end of it and we'll use this to score details into the paper and then we're going to smudge pencil over the top um, so that we can make some fine bright lines on the paper. Um, any sort of, uh, you know, little bit of, of cloth or a bit of kitchen paper, we can use that for smudging. Um, a bit of torn cardboard as well would be useful. I th and also a pair of scissors because we're going to cut out some shapes. Maybe you can see here uh, the shadow behind this leaf um which is sort of similar to that leaf there so cut the leaf out and uh use the paper as a mask to cover that area up and then i've worked over the top of the paper with my pencil and then removed my pencil so that i have a nice bright uh leaf with a nice dark shadow behind it so those are some of the techniques that we'll be using having an eraser that's the last thing that will be useful will be to have an eraser cut into a little point uh, for removing very fine details i mean it's sort of over to you now to find your own visual reference um, design something that you're just really going to be engaged with over the next few weeks um, and have a think about uh yeah what you what you would enjoy drawing um painting flowers and trees it's quite a neat mural paint uh, wallpaper designer's trick trees are brilliant because they can go a branch can sort of go around the corner or a tree can be tall or it can be short so they're just useful things so so if you've like me who do this for a job paint a lot of flowers and trees so that's the that i've got a really good set of visual reference for for those um for plants and so on uh, but don't feel that that's what you need to do. It'd be nice to have something that has a bit of obvious light and shade, uh, maybe a bit of background going on. My uh, flowers here are just straight onto the white background. Um, you might want to have something which has a bit more going on in the background, sort of a bit like this flower where there's sort of dark and leaves uh, behind, things that are in focus and out of focus. Will we be doing any painting or is it just going to be pencil drawing? We're going to be doing drawing, but on the 3rd of June, I'll be doing a demonstration of the painting techniques that you can use to translate all of this kind of mark making into paint. Um, the reason that we're starting with pencil and paper is that that's the way we do the design process anyway, and pencil and paper are the materials most people have to hand. Um, so, and it's a good, it's a good beginning, you know, with working in these tones of gray anyway, to work with a pencil. And then, um, yeah, I'll do a demo of translating all those techniques into paint and the sort of things, uh, the materials that we might have around the house that we can use to, to paint. Do we need to, have already drawn the outline of the picture for the next lesson? Um, I think it, if you have time, it would be helpful. Um, I thought that what I would do would be to go through in a bit more detail about how to blend the pencil and how to use the different techniques. So I thought I might do a demonstration of drawing some different textures. So maybe drawing something that's quite shiny, has something quite hard, reflective, um, a bit more with the petal. So I was going to go through, yeah, different textures. And if you can draw along and have some questions at the same time, that would be great. Um, but if, if you don't have time to do that, just have your pencil, your bits of torn card, possibly your paper clip if you have one, have those to hand and just some scraps of paper 
and do a bit of practice as we go along and then you can carry that over and work on your your piece separately not during the session thank you so much for coming along it's uh it's really great thank you so much for taking the time it's very exciting that you're interested and you're going to have a go good I look forward to seeing you next week <laughs>